I am going to get so much shit for this one. Megadeth. And Metallica. The one scrappy underdog. And the Metal Mount Olympus. Two of the greatest metal bands of all time. And one of on the internet will pit these two juggernauts head to head, album to album, song to song, to find out who truly is. Well, here we are. The final albums from Megadeth, The Sick, The Dying of the Dead, and Metallica, 72 Seasons. Sorry for the delay on this one, by the way. I wanted to give these albums, you know, a few more spins or really get more familiar with them. And also just a lot of things in life interfering, but it's time. We're here. We're here. Also, for the one final time, I want to remind everyone who gets super angry in these comments and gets into wars and spats and everything, this is all just for fun. I love both these bands with all of my heart. Yes, I do like Megadeth more, but I also damn near equally love Metallica. Okay? Okay. If your opinion differs from somebody else's, good for you. If it differs from mine, good for you. More power to you. Everyone's entitled to their opinion. Let people have their opinions. Let people have fun. We're here to have fun! Anyway, let's start this. Man, I want to play Bloodborne every time I see this Megadeth cover. The intro has similar sounds and the cleans to The World Needs a Hero, which evolves into the more Kiko era of Megadeth stuff. The riffs are sick, of course, but Dave's little yeah, yeah, yeah is driving me nuts. I just, I don't like them. They just feel lazy. Otherwise, I love every single bit of this song. And then Metallica comes out slamming out of the gate with one of my favorite tracks on the album. It's classic nonstop and has a monster of a chorus. This song has not lost its impact on me from my first listen. I mean, even the Panthers play this song on the SAP Center when they're playing their games. I mean, come on. It's a great pump-up song. It's just, it just is. It's a great pump up that gets in the early lead. Life in hell, more like life in riff. The guitar work, like most modern Megadeth stuff, stands out. While I love the sound of the drumming, there are more beats than Boot Cat Booty Cat. The bridge really reminds me actually of Millennium of the Blind and more classic Megadeth talking bits, which is a massive plus. Now, Shadows Follow brings a bounce that's fairly fun, but just like there's more drum beats than Boot Cat Booty Cat, there's more guitar riff structures than Dat Dat Dat. What gets Metallica another point here though is the pretty sweet chorus. The crescendo building to the bouncy payoff is so good. When I heard Ice-T was featured on this track, I was so damn excited. And when I heard it, I was so damn disappointed. Which is a real shame considering the rest of the track is just so damn awesome, just pure aggression. Screaming soup. YouTube doesn't like that word. It's more like a modern load reload style riff type of song. And James sounds awesome, including actually pretty deep lyrics. Night Stalkers is still better overall, only just enough to put the shutout on ice. Dogs is apparently a favorite track of a lot of the fans. I mean, it's cool, especially the intro. Damn, that shit's haunting and beautiful. But once the song proper kicks in, what the hell happened? You go from that amazing intro to sounding like one of the poor and finished souls from 13. Sleepwalk bring it to bass and one of the bounciest riffs I've heard in a while. It remains good throughout as well. I know this will piss people off, but one, I don't care. And two, you cannot tell me you were not expecting more from dogs after that amazing intro on your first listen. Don't, don't even try to tell me you didn't. That alone makes this the most disappointing track to me. Shame. Sacrifice reminds me of cryptic writings. Hell yeah. You Must Burn also talks about witches. Coincidence? I think not. Sacrifice is just cool to me overall. To this day, I hate the intro to Junkie and the j j j j j junkie part. Now, let me be clear. I hate that part in the recording. I've just never really been a big fan of when bands put live style bits into recorded songs. If those have been here long enough, no, my main narch, arch, narch? arch nemesis is freaking hand claps in songs. Just, unless it's a dance track, fine. In rock music, no freaking claps on the record. See, cause live, the j, j just sounds like something you'd ad lib. Otherwise, this song kicks ass. This song was proof though that people really only latch onto the negative things you say in an album review. You can say so many positive things. 99% of the things you say are positive, but the 1% you suddenly despise and hate this album. Whatever, Lux Eterna is an anomaly. I hold on to this as well to this day, that the Lux Eterna main riff does not sound like a main riff to me to start off with, but as the song goes on, it 
feels like it just builds up. Like, it doesn't change at all, but just, I don't know what it is. It's weird. Intro, when they first play it, it just sounds super thin and uninspired. But when you get it later as it comes back and throughout the song and everything, it just sounds fuller and better. It's weird, but it works. But there is just no escaping how much that solo kills the song. J -j 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 Junkie wins. Killing Time reminds me of System in the Verse and the good parts of 13 in the chorus. It's a mix that does work. Also, the bridge solo section is awesome. Apparently, some folks don't like Crown. Now, I'll agree. The intro is a little weak. Using an extension of the one-step connection riff, come on. However, the main riff slams, and the chorus is sweet. Something has gotten my eye. Not sweet enough to kill time, though. Okay, this is by far and away the best matchup on the album. Soldier On kicks ass. Chasing Light kicks ass. Both songs have kick-ass choruses. I will give the edge to Chasing Light. It is extremely close. The closest match of the album so far. Almost too close to truly choose, but just enough space to see the light. Another damn good matchup, I'm gonna save you some time. Cell Butante is one of my favorite Mega tracks for a long time. It is a masterpiece in classic thrash styles. People said Mission to Mars would grow on me. <laughs> no. We'll be back. In the lead, We'll Be Back is a screamer of a track and was the perfect choice for the first single. Does it recycle some old cadences? Yeah, sure, but it's awesome. Same thing for Room of Mirrors, but in the reflection, it sees a tie go away. And then we have the bonus track, Inamorata. I got a lot of hate in my review for not gushing over this track. Like, a lot of hate. Even though I gave it a positive review, again, we're back to people talking about negative. We're over that now. I'm gonna bring more hate though, cause I'm still holding this. This track is overhyped as hell. Does that mean I hate it? Absolutely not. It's still a damn good song. But people were treating it like the second coming of Jesus in a damn denim vest. Newsflash people, just because a song is long does not make it epic. It has some fantastic parts, but as a total package, it's just another track. Again, I don't hate it. It's just not blah. And no, it doesn't get the bonus point, which gives Megadeth the final win. Now, this is not the finale. We actually do have one more video coming soon. Thank you all for supporting the series, and have fun raging at me in the comments. I'd like to thank you guys so much for checking out this video. Next to me, you'll see two videos available along with channels you can subscribe to. If you want to support me directly, go down below, click the join button, join the Fender Rock Clan. All three years have perks. Check out the perks. If you want to support me directly, I have merch. Check out the links below for merch like this shirt and also the hat you guys saw me. As always, name's David. You call me Fender Rock. Thank you so much. Take care.